What does it mean to subtract an edge from a graph, to delete an edge? How does that work? That's what we'll be going over in today's Wrath of Map lesson. Previously, we've gone over how to delete a vertex from a graph, which is a little trickier because we also have to delete the incident edges. But when we delete edges, it's all fairly simple. Let's say this graph here is a graph called G, and we want to look at the graph G minus a certain edge. Let's say we want to get rid of the edge db. So we would write that as g minus db. Very simply, when we remove an edge from a graph, we keep the same vertex set and we keep the same edge set all except for that one edge that we delete. In this case, we're deleting the edge db, so we'll go ahead and get rid of that. And there is our graph g minus db. Now let's say we wanted to delete an additional edge from this graph. Let's say we wanted to delete the edge dA. Then we could write that as g minus db minus dA, and then deleting that edge, this is the graph we would be left with. And notice that we only delete that edge. We do not delete the incident vertices. There are a couple other ways we could write this graph g minus db minus dA. We could put the two edges we're deleting in a set. So this is the graph g with the edges db and dA deleted. It's just another way of writing this graph down here. Or if we gave this set a name, let's say we called it s, then we could simply write g minus s. It's just the graph G with the edges in S removed from it. So all of this is pretty straightforward. Let's get rid of all this and look at one more thing of interest. Let's say we delete the edge BC from our graph G. So this is the graph G minus BC. Again, we keep the same exact vertex set. No vertices are deleted when we delete edges. Then we just remove that edge BC. Notice that this disconnects the graph. We've gone from one component to two components. Thus, the edge BC is called a bridge. Something interesting to take note of is that sometimes we can delete a vertex from a graph and be left with many more components than we started with. For example, consider a star graph with four vertices. If we delete the middle vertex, we go from having one component to having three components. Something like this will never happen when we delete an edge. Deleting an edge will only ever increase the number of components by one. If the edge BC is a bridge, then G minus BC will have one component with the vertex B in it and one component with the vertex C in it. But just saying that an edge is a bridge if it disconnects the graph when deleted, that's not really the full story. Because for example, deleting the edge FE from this graph doesn't disconnect the graph because the graph is already disconnected, but the edge FE is a bridge. And that's because before we delete this edge FE, we have two components, but deleting it leaves us with three components. So here's a way we can more formally define a bridge. And quickly just point out this notation k of g refers to the number of components in the graph g. So for a graph g and an edge e in the graph g, if the number of components of g is one less than the number of components of g minus the edge e, then e is a bridge. And take care to notice that this equation means that the number of components in G is one less than the number of components in G with that edge E deleted. Since the graph G has one less component, we need to subtract one from the number of components in G minus E to make them equal. So anytime that's true about an edge E in a graph, E is called a bridge. Now to get a little practice, here's a kind of funny looking graph I drew. Tell me in the comments if this graph has any bridges, and if it does, what are they? And I just noticed I forgot to label one of these vertices. This one we'll call J. 
And one last time, to subtract an edge from a graph, all you have to do is delete that edge from the edge set. The vertex set remains the same. So I hope this video helped you understand edge deletion in graphs. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Link to his music in the description. See you.